This is the Redmi Note 10 Pro. It looks like your typical flagship smartphone, but it's actually a fraction of the cost. I've tried this phone for a couple weeks now and I'm convinced it's the best smartphone under $300. And in fact, probably better than a lot of thousand dollar smartphones. So today I'm gonna show you guys why I think this is the best smartphone under $300. So full disclosure, Xiaomi, the company that makes this phone, reached out to me to do a video about it. And I was skeptical at first because of the price. So I said I would try it and then maybe, but I really thought that I wasn't gonna like it because it's so inexpensive. And then I tried it and I was like, wow, I have to make a video about this because it's actually good. It's really the camera that I think is pretty amazing for the price you're getting. This camera on this phone is incredible. We will get into that. I have a lot of test footage. I think this is hands down the best smartphone under $300 that I've seen. Like it is pretty crazy to me that it's under $300. So, so this is gonna be kind of like a highlights video. My favorite things about this phone. Not so much review, like I'm not really like critiquing it. So yeah, let's check out the best things about this phone. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into what I think is everyone's favorite part of phone reviews, the camera tests. With this phone, you get four different lenses, which is a step up from pretty much every smartphone I've tried, even the iPhone. So of course you get a standard wide angle lens. You also get an ultra wide angle and a telephoto lens. So to have all three lenses is really the standard among flagship phones. And this phone is much less expensive than those. And it also has one more lens that is a macro lens, allowing you to get really cool close up shots. So I don't even own a macro lens for my DSLR cameras, but occasionally I'll wanna get a really, really close up shot. And this can capture in extreme detail. So you just put it on the super macro mode and it's almost like a microscope the level of detail that you get here crazy right you can see just so up close every little ridge in my thumb I actually use the phone to get macro shots of the phone so any macro shots you see in this video are using the redmi note 10 pro so i'm using the super macro mode to get a shot of the lens and you can see it in just such insane detail like you can see a speck of dust on there it's pretty crazy so i actually love that it included this because i don't even have a macro lens for my dslr cameras but now i'm like hey i have a macro lens that i can use whenever i need so that's like a really cool little bonus there whenever you're using a macro lens it does end up a little shaky because it's so close up it shows like every little bump so it's better to use this on a tripod i'm just gonna put it on my little phone tripod here it's just crazy the level of detail it gets. So you can see when I put the phone on the tripod to get the shot, it's a lot more stable. Just anytime you're shooting this up close, you really have to use a tripod no matter what camera it is. It's really handy to have a lens like this if you're into photography or videography. Take this shot of this tile sample, I can get an insane level of detail where you can actually see like the pixels of the tile. Here's a few other test shots I got using the super macro effect. It's actually really fun to play around with because it can see like better than your own eyes <laughs> kind of a niche feature like maybe not everyone would use this every day but if you're really into videography and photography it is super handy to have this when i was first shooting on the camera i had it in 1080p and i was like okay it's like as good as any android phone out there then i switched it to 4k and i was like oh okay this is actually way better so here it is shooting in 1080. It's definitely good. And I would say this is kind of on par with a lot of flagship Android phones. And then we'll switch over to 4K. It is just so sharp, crystal clear in my opinion. I was so impressed with this. Here's kind of a blog style clip that I got with the back camera. So this is the wide angle, like the main 108 megapixel one. And it's so good. It seriously gives my blog camera a run for its money. For under $300, it's, it's pretty unbelievable. So this is all using the main lens, which is the wide angle 108 megapixel. This one is the best I found with all these phones that have multiple lenses, usually the normal wide angle one is the best quality. And then the other ones are a little lower. So anytime I'm using a phone to get footage, no matter what phone, I'll typically use the wide angle because it's almost always the best quality, but then I'll often use the ultra wide too, just cause getting those wide shots is really nice. 
So you've already seen now a good amount of the standard wide angle. This is the ultra wide lens, so it shoots in 1080p, but still looks really good, especially during the daytime. When I was first editing this, I had to double check if it was the 4K or the 1080p. Like to me, it looks really good. Like you can really see the detail in the waterfall. And I guess it's a little softer than if it's in 4K, but I think, you know, most people are barely gonna notice that. And then switching back to the standard wide angle, I'm shooting in 4K here. You can see it's just not quite as stable because you're zoomed in a little more, I guess, but you can stabilize it in editing. So that's kind of what I did a lot of the time, but it's very sharp. And even in lower light settings, it didn't get too grainy, which was nice. Phones in general aren't as good in lower light because they just don't have the room for that big of a sensor. And it also did a really good job autofocusing, which I found really handy because then you can use the back camera and record yourself without really seeing yourself. You don't have to worry about it being in focus because the autofocus is really good. Like in this shot, you can see how quick it goes from focusing on the phone back to me. And then I can even bring the camera a little closer and it focuses kind of take it to the background, focuses on that, but then it focuses right back on me when I'm back. I was really interested to see how this would compare to the iPhone 12 Pro. So I put them head to head and I'll let you guys be the judge. I mean, take a look at this footage. So here we've got a side by side of the iPhone 12 Pro with the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And am I crazy or do they look just about the same? In terms of sharpness, I think that they both look incredibly similar. Like the Redmi Note 10 Pro really is the same amount of sharpness and quality, I think, to the iPhone 12 Pro. The only differences we're seeing is kind of coloring, which is kind of subjective. I feel like everyone has their own preference on that, but you can kind of color it however you want with editing anyway. But to me, it's crazy that the Redmi is like a quarter of the price of the iPhone 12 Pro and the cameras are pretty similar. So just comparing it to my vlog camera, I'm holding my vlog camera side by side to the Redmi Note 10 Pro and they're both really crisp and clear. One is like $1,400 with the lens and one is $279. So here's a side-by-side -side of the Redmi Note 10 Pro compared to my vlog camera. And although this phone isn't trying to be like a vlog camera, it's kind of cool to see that you could use it for vlogging. Like it actually is really high quality. And then the last thing to touch on with the camera is the selfie camera. So I'm using the selfie camera right now and I'll step into some direct sunlight so you can see how it is in slightly different lighting. So kind of harsh lighting, but the more light you have generally, the better the camera is gonna work when it comes to smartphones. So the selfie camera is obviously a little lower quality than the back camera. That's how all selfie cameras are with like all phones I've found. And it also has kind of like a skin smoothing effect you can see. So, I mean, it's always handy to have a selfie camera, but obviously the back camera is better quality, um, but it's still solid, like it still gets the job done. Okay, so enough about the cameras, let's talk about the rest of the phone. All right, so let's talk about the phone itself. So the actual phone is a really good size. It's bigger than the iPhone 12 Pro. You get like almost an inch. So you can see it's pretty tall. It's actually a 6.67 inch AMOLED display. And I like that it's not too wide. It still fits in your hand really nicely. And side by side with the iPhone 12 Pro, you can see it's like maybe almost an inch taller about, maybe more like half an inch, which is nice. You get like a little more screen when you're watching videos and things like that, but it still can fit in your pocket. This phone has the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. So it is very fast. If you're less into specs, this is a standard kind of processor for a mid-range phone. And really, if you're not like gaming or doing anything too intense on your phone, this kind of doesn't really matter that much. For me personally, I don't really use games on my phone, but I know a lot of people do. And just trying it out with some games, it definitely seemed fast. Like it was not laggy at all or anything like that. So speed, not really something you need to worry about with this phone, it is fast. It also has a side button fingerprint to unlock, which I think is a great feature. Face ID is cool and all, but sometimes I feel like it's slower to open. So I like that this phone has the option of both. Another great feature of this phone I've found is that it has a really large battery and the battery lasts for so long. Like I can use it for a couple days before really needing to charge it. It has a battery endurance rating of 114 hours. 114, that's a long time. 
This phone has a 5,020 mAh battery. To put that in perspective, the iPhone 12 Pro has around 3,000. That's why it has such a long battery life and that does come in handy it's when you're shooting photos and videos. You don't feel like you have to worry about draining the battery because the battery lasts so long. So that's been my experience with this phone and some of the highlights and my favorite things about it. I think if you're looking for an Android phone that's not gonna break the bank but still take amazing photos and videos, this is the phone for you. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. Hope that you guys enjoyed. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. I'll have more info about the Redmi Note 10 Pro in the description, and I will see you guys in my next video.